Hey guys and welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to be helping you with a massive problem a lot of people have been having and I've had this problem in the past before as well and when I load up my Elgato for instance I've been recording the day before and I've turned it on today and for some reason it says I've got no sound. If I get that working it says I've got no signal and um, these are two different matters that happen with the Elgato. For some reason it's so fidgety. Like, I love Elgato software and uh, the whole product itself, but for some odd reason, we encounter these problems where if you go to the Elgato website, they've only got basic troubleshooting for. Um, so today I'm going to be going over the troubleshooting, some handy tips for the future if you're ever actually encountering this problem again. Um, some really simple stuff which people forget to do and advanced uh, troubleshooting. Now, I will recommend at some point in this video that you might have to contact the Elgato team themselves. Uh, I've been there in that scenario. The team's really nice if you need to deal with them. Um, but nonetheless, hopefully one of these fixes in this video help you out and hopefully you don't have to contact them. So first of all, we are actually going to start off with the basics. Now, if you are recording on a Elgato HD, HD60 or a HD60S, which I use for some time and now I've upgraded to the HD60 Pro. Um, I don't know if it encounters a problem in this. Uh, I've not had a problem with this yet, but if, it, if I do have a problem, I will make an additional video um, covering that one. But if all the previous Elgatos from the HD60 up to the HD60S, I've encountered these problems. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a lot of these now, for some reason, when you're, oh, it's upside down. You're setting up your Elgato HD60 or any previous Elgato, and it's very temperamental. Now, for instance, on the back where you plug your, uh, this is the the main wire port here. So this goes plugs into your computer. Now, if you're doing the troubleshooting on the Elgato website, which they do not mention, if you take that wire out. And plug it back in straight away it's not going to work you're doing literally nothing to uh, the software on this you have to wait two minutes and um, the senior team at Elgato mentioned that it takes two minutes for an Elgato to fully reset before you can plug it back in so if you're plugging it in you're wasting your time now if you've been doing the steps over on the Elgato website, I want you to completely scratch it all out and start again. Um, go buy this video and I'm going to go through all of them and hopefully one of them will work for you. So first of all, I want you to, if you're using an Xbox or Playstation, if you're using a PC um, with a HD60 Pro, I will probably cover that in another video. Just comment down below and let me know what problems you're encountering. Um, so I want you to unplug all your HDMI cables and your Elgato um, basically wait two minutes and then move on to this step what I'm about to mention right now and that is to check your HDMI cables. Now if you plug a HDMI cable into your PlayStation into your TV it should work perfectly fine you should see the picture of your PlayStation or Xbox or whatever game you're playing. Um, now there's the thing with HDMI cables is that they're multi-directional, so regardless of what end you plug into, say the PlayStation or the TV, it should work regardless. Now some HDMI cables aren't that, so you want to make sure that you've, your HDMI cables work um, in that matter. Um, try both cables, make sure they're working, just in case that they're not multi-directional, make sure, like try them on different ends. Um, and that should cover that step. Now, once you've waited two minutes, I am going to get you to set up all your Elgato. If you're going to set it up behind your TVs, just don't bother until you actually get it working. Uh, cable management is such a nightmare when you're trying to deal with Elgato problems. So, from your PlayStation to your Xbox, a HDMI cable into the back of that, and then into the Elgato in slot right here. Um, then plug a HDMI cable into the out port and into the back of your TV. Now you won't get a signal at the moment until you actually plug in the US, the mini USB port right here um, and then plug it into your computer. Now if you're getting no signal at all through your TV, not your PC screen, 
there could be a problem with the software on your Elgato. Now there's a couple of little fixes PlayStation and Xbox users may encounter and that is of course HDCP which you need to disable on your console. There are tons of videos on YouTube how to do that and you can also see it on the screen back there. Um, and there's another problem where PlayStation 4 users, um, sorry, PlayStation 4 Pro users encounter and that is HDR, you need to turn that off as well. That is in the video output settings in the sound and screen. Um, if you go into that and turn that off as well, that will stop you from recording as well. Um, luckily, when I got my PS4, that was one of the first things I'd done because my screen wasn't actually uh, compatible with the HDR, so I turned it off straight away. Right guys, so the next thing you're wanting to do is you want to grab one of your boxes for your Elgato, regardless of what you're using, and you want to actually check the specifications. Um, you've probably done that already, but nonetheless you need to meet the requirements on the back, as you can see down here. There we go. Um, we've got the requirements, same we're reading that out. Um, but my computer actually meets all these requirements, it's actually a lot better than these requirements. Um, so that is one problem you need to check as well or else you have to downgrade or upgrade your computer um, and that is just a pain in the ass because you'll pretty much need to buy a new PC. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is look at drivers. So on screen right now I am opening my NVIDIA um, software and I'm also opening my Windows software and I am checking for the latest versions. Now, Windows has like new versions pretty much every week. It's crazy how many updates Windows does. Uh, but you want to make sure everything's up to date, all your drivers. And in future, if none of these things work for you and you can't get them working at all, if you actually contact Elgato's team, they will do a Windows um, system report. So basically, um, you download this um, Windows reporter, which downloads all the sort of drivers and that on your computer which sends it to them and they look up how your computer's performing and if it can sort of perform well and which drivers you're using if you need to update anything and so this saves a lot of time in the future if you're going to phone Elgato if you have this video doesn't help you. So once you're done downloading all your drivers you want to head over to the Elgato website where you can find the latest downloads for the software which you can download on Windows or Mac depending on what one you're using and I would highly recommend you download the latest version and not a previous one. Elgato do say on their website for instance um, they had a previous logo which you can see right here and they recently changed it to this logo here and um, you can go back and download them. I would highly recommend um, staying with the latest version though. Um, because that would probably work out better for yourself. There's more features, more bug fixes, and it saves other problems occurring if you have an older version. Now this might be a really straightforward one as well, which you guys have probably done already, is open up your Elgato software once it's fully connected. You might not have any signal if these steps didn't help you already. You might, I don't know. Um, but. Go into the settings and make sure you're not selected on the wrong input selection, uh, which means you make sure it's on HDMI if you're using that, or component, or S video, or composite. Um, just make sure it's on the correct things like PS4. Make sure your quality is the best you can do. Right guys, so if nothing's helped you so far, we're going to go into more detail and um, into fixing your Elgato. Now, a lot of these suggestions Elgato will recommend doing if you phone them, so it saves you some time um, so you can get through. Sometimes um, they can work, sometimes they won't, like they'll explain. So first of all, if you press the start button on your PC and then right click on the actual icon, and head up to power options and then click on that. Once that's loaded in, you will see tons of settings. Um, if you fully maximize it on your computer, you will see on the right hand side, you'll see additional power settings. If you go and click on that, and then you'll see a place where it says preferred plans, uh, which is balanced, high performance, um, additional plans like power saving. Now you would want to go into the advanced section 
which is usually down at the bottom. I don't know why it's on the top of my screen, but you can see it here. Um, but it was on balance before I done this and I went and put it on high performance. Favours performance but uses more energy around your house, uh, which you might want to consider or ask your mum or dad if you're allowed to do that. Um, nonetheless, once you've done that, you have to re then reset your computer. Another thing we're going to do if your Elgato doesn't work after that is go into the start menu, go into settings. Um, I'm using Windows 10, by the way, guys. If you're using it in previous, I don't know where it is and I can't help you. Uh, go into devices and then on the right hand side, you'll see the relating settings and devices and printers. You want to click on that and your Elgato should be popped up in these sort of sections here. Now, once you're on devices and printer, you want to scroll down and see the Elgato um, logo at the bottom. What you want to do is right click on that, that icon and go down to properties. Um, then you want to click on hardware and go on to properties again. Once you've done that, you want to click on drivers and then you will see a little icon here saying disable the driver. Now, once you disable this on your computer, it may tell you you have to reboot. So once you reboot, just open um, the devices and printer again, go into properties, um, open up the hardware and click on properties again and then re-enable it. This might have to ask, it might ask you again just to sort of reset your computer, which is pretty frustrating. Uh, but nonetheless, once you're re rebooted back up, click OK. Um, open up your Elgato software and this is one of the biggest fixes for a lot of people is just disabling it and re-enabling it. It works perfect um, and that is one of the things the Elgato team don't tell you as well that disabling it and re-enabling it usually fixes it as well. Now if none of them problems fix you, um, often if you just remove your HDMI's and plug them back in that can trigger um, your Elgato to work again. That helps out with a lot of sound problems as well. Closing down the software and then reopening it really helps as well. That is one of the common things that people do to get it back working. Um, there is also a suggestion on the Elgato website which um, recommends uninstall and reinstall the software. And the reason I left that for last is because it's the most frustrating one, like uninstalling stuff and having to wait. And that is probably the one that takes the longest and I recommend doing that last. And nonetheless guys, you would probably have to contact the Elgato team if it doesn't work. And they are absolutely amazing at helping you out. Hopefully that your Elgato doesn't end up like mine and completely broken. And when I turn this on, plug it into the settings, I get two white lights. Two, there's seven lights in here. So I get all seven flash twice and then it goes seven red lights once which means no signal and you can see that on your screen as well and um, the only thing other thing they suggest you do is replace HDMI cables and um, but if your Elgato's um, like if you're sorry if your PlayStation's working fine from your computer and both leads you do not need to do that you don't need to go out and buy any more HDMI cables um, and they will be able to guide you through the Windows Reporter, which I filled out as well. And uh, basically, you can see on my home screen here, I've got support information. I can open that, but I don't want to go and open it. Um, so you can see, sort of see the backing um, email on the traces and stuff. It searches um, about 100 and, about 167 files through Elgal, and that will see. Um, the problems where you're incurring if it's NVIDIA or Windows or somewhere in your computer which isn't working correctly and um, but the team guides you through that and it take, takes a while it took me about a week and a half before I actually got my Elgato fixed um, and I just eventually decided to get rid of this Elgato and finally upgrade to a, an Elgato which is a, in a PCI slot in my PC no cables anywhere and it, it's better quality really um, so nonetheless guys I hopefully one of these fix help for you and um, nonetheless leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think um, if 
you're encountering other problems, let me know and I'll see if I can help you out with them. Um, but leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.